Hey you all, Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the great state of Texas, more specifically Houston, Texas, and even more specifically than that, today we are visiting the Museum of Funeral History, the history of burying dead bodies, the history of disposing of corpses, the history of remembering the dead and respecting the dead. This is the largest facility of, of its type of funeral history. Um, it should be a pretty interesting journey inside. So please, follow me. Oh boy, we have a selfie spot right here. Get a selfie with the hearse that was used for Ronald Reagan and Gerald Ford. Okay, this is just kind of insane. This is a black fabric covered casket beer. It is the thing that goes underneath a casket. You can see it right here. Put the casket on top of that. But this particular beer was used in the funerals of Lady Bird Johnson, Betty Ford, Nancy Reagan, Barbara Bush, Gerald Ford, and George H.W. Bush. That is unbelievable how many people of, of note were on top of this platform, or, or at least their, their dead bodies. That's a massive section on presidential funerals. Here are the cannon rounds used for the 21 gun salute at Gerald Ford's funeral. And there we have a reef that was used at the same funeral. This is not just any embalming machine. This is the embalming machine used to embalm President Harry S. Truman. Wow. Some items from Lincoln's funeral. You can see the uh, Derringer there. That's not the Derringer that was used to kill Lincoln, but a one similar to that. It's uh, almost amazing that a gun that small could take down a man as mighty as Lincoln. It's a replica of Lincoln's death mask made by artist S.J. Stout. And here we have a replica of a Lincoln laying in his casket. You can see a very very lavish casket right there. You can see the, the man laying in there. Here's a Union soldier standing guard. Look at his felty face. Here's a miniature of uh, the Abe Lincoln funeral procession. Of course, uh, his body went on tour after dying and traveled across the United States so it had different funerals. Here we see the soldiers taking his casket and loading it into a waiting hearse. Wow, six black horses. And this is the same brand of casket that was used for Ronald Reagan's funeral. And this is the model and style used for JFK's funeral. Wow, this is absolutely amazing that they have this here. This is the original Eternal Flame. This is the uh, gas-powered torch that would uh, shoot out flames uh, at uh, John F. Kennedy's grave. Uh, so this one was used from 1967 to 1998. Apparently they switched out uh, to a different mechanism at that time, but that is the original. Oh my goodness. It's an interesting artifact. These cupcakes, real cupcakes that were baked for the uh, 100th birthday of uh, Ronald Reagan. Of course, he was deceased at the time. Of course, garnished with jelly beans. The band loved jelly beans. Coming soon, a uh, exhibit on the funeral of George H.W. Bush. I guess whenever a president becomes deceased, they uh, they add an exhibit. 
Here's some items from casket manufacturers. You can see the different adornments that would go onto a casket. There's the different materials that would be used to line the inside. Over here you see they actually have little mock-ups that uh, people could observe before purchasing the full-sized casket. Here is a mock-up of a casket factory where caskets would be handmade. You can see the woodworking tools. And over here the beautiful finished product. Check out this gorgeous 1921 hearse right here. Of course for Christmas funerals you're probably going to want to go with this. The hearse sled pulled by horses. See they loaded the uh, casket here in the back. Here's your 1929 Studebaker hearse. International Hall. It's a 1922 uh, Japanese hearse. Yeah, it's really an amazing vehicle. I like how the front is you know, classic car design and then this just elaborate add-on in the back. Of course, Mexican culture known for celebrating death with Day of the Dead. Um, not that they celebrate the loss of their loved ones, but uh, they like to celebrate the life of those that passed away. You can see the altar there covered oh, yeah. in food. I am fascinated by the Day of the Dead traditions, but I must say, this guy lurking outside the door, um, just a little bit unsettling. One thing I am noticing a lot of here at the Museum of Funeral History, a lot of different varieties of hearses. One interesting uh, phenomenon is the practices in Ghana of having these elaborate caskets shaped like various objects. These are all different caskets. So this person here, buried in a giant onion. We got a boat motor, probably someone who loved boating. It's a big fish. And you can see how they open up and you would place the body inside. I think that is like a like a lobster or some sort of crustacean. Got a crab up there, a chicken, a leopard, a bull. That's a tiny little casket there, that car, and an airplane. There we have a fishing canoe, casket, and a, what looks like a bald eagle. This section here, it's all about the funerals of popes. Here is a papal throne, a big throne that the pope would sit on during church services. Here's different pope skull caps. This is an example of a papal gentleman. They're basically the uh, henchmen of the Pope that surround him at all times. This is the Sedieri Pontificale. They are, uh, their job is to carry the Pope, uh, both when he's alive, carry him on his throne, and once he dies, they carry the dead body as well. This is a really interesting part of a Pope's funeral. They use the silver hammer and what they do is they break the Pope's ring. They shatter his ring just to signify that he is no longer Pope. Um, and apparently, they used to use the hammer to crack the Pope in the head to make sure he was dead. Man, I bet if he was alive, he'd be angry. We see a tableau of a Pope's funeral. You can see the Pope lying there his body being guarded. This is a papal coffin. This is the traditional coffin used to bury popes. Um, there's actually three coffins here. For some reason, they 
put them all together like a Russian nesting doll. Yeah, you see the Pope goes in the middle and they go into continually larger caskets. You see in this scene, the Pope has been placed inside his nesting doll casket. Here's a replica of Pope John Paul's crypt. Here we go old school with the history of embalming. Now they don't have an actual mummy in this exhibit, but they do have this super spooky replica. It says that embalming actually began uh, around Civil War. Oh, you see that big box there of embalming fluid. And then we got the embalming process here. This guy's uh, using that hose to either pump uh, stuff in or out of that dead body. Here is an ice box casket before embalming. They would just pack Sometimes the body in ice. You look inside the spices. coffin, Sometimes you can actually see it's metal like the inside Sometimes of a in refrigerator. Coffee. There's different tools used in the embalming process. It's a makeup kit used to prepare the body, make it all nice looking for the funeral. It's a mock-up of an embalming room. May not be pleasant work, but somebody has to do it. Here's some hair wreaths. It's actually where they would take the deceased hair and frame wreaths. This isn't something we do anymore. This is a Victorian house of mourning. This is a mourning quilt. Actually would take the ribbons that would be sent in uh, with flowers, flower baskets, and they would sew them all together and make a quilt. Now this casket is a replica of George Barris's casket. George Barris did a lot of the um, famous Hollywood movie cars. He invented the uh, original Batmobile used in the Adam West Batman series. And he had this custom casket made by a friend of his. Here, this section, thanks for the memories, who pays homage to some famous people my favorite character from the Wizard of Oz, the Munchkin Coroner, which is fitting given this is the Museum of Funeral History. It says here that he was only on screen for 13 seconds, but still managed to become an icon. And I didn't know this about him, that he actually played the role of the mascot for uh, Oscar Meyer Wiener, known as Little Oscar, the world's smallest chef. Here's a Wienermobile in his honor. This here was the original cover to Marilyn Monroe's tomb. It says that the um, constant touching and kissing, people traditionally kiss Marilyn Monroe's tomb, that wears away at, uh, at the marble. And you actually, when you go and visit it, it is a different color than all the other um, crypt fronts. And I admit, I myself have kissed Marilyn Monroe's grave. It says these are the hiking boots worn by Robin Williams in his classic movie, RV. It's the seven doors right there. And this is a replica of Snow White's casket from the animated movie Snow White. Uh, apparently a company put this for sale during the height of the movie's popularity. I believe this is the only one left. We got this, got this TV right here showing some of the famous movie animals that died over the years. This is the 27 Club, the uh, group of musicians that have all died at the age of 27. I guess Robert Johnson being the first member after inventing blues. Kurt Cobain after inventing grunge. I guess you don't want to invent music or you will die. And of course, Janis Joplin, Amy Winehouse, one of the more recent members, and Jim Morrison. Jimi Hendrix and Brian Jones. These are canisters used to launch ashes into space. Some of the ashes have been launched into space. James Doohan and Gene Roddenberry from Star Trek. Here you see different uh, funeral programs for famous people. You can see Jim Henson, the guy that invented Twister. This here, uh, Robert Hagis, best known for his portrayal as 
high school student Juan Epstein on uh, Welcome Back Cotter. I'm not sure why they have a pack of cigarettes uh, for his uh, funeral. Look at this. It's an exhibit on Paul Bearer, famous professional wrestling manager, famous mostly for uh, managing The Undertaker as can be seen right there. So very fitting with the theme of the museum. However, it goes even deeper than that. He was a real funeral director and actually worked um, in Texas, in San Antonio. This here is actually one of the urns that he would carry to the ring with him. That's amazing. One of Paul Bearer's real urns. Oh wow, you can actually see from this uh, issue of WW Magazine that urn is the same urn in the famous double turn where he hit the undertaker in the head, turning on him and joining with mankind. Now this is a niche wall, which would be a wall used to display the remains of uh, past individuals and urns. Uh, but here at the museum, they use this as a donation opportunity and different groups or people can uh, have a urn advertising their their business or in remembrance of someone placed here on the niche wall. You can see a lot of these are actually donated uh, by crematoriums. This is the Fresh Pond Crematory. This is the Cremation Society of Illinois. For only $1,500, we could have a carpetbagger urn placed in here. This is donated by Love Urns. You can see, I guess they designed special urns. These are shaped like birds. And then down here, these ones shaped like butterflies. American Funeral Supply Company. Terry Bear Urns and Memorials. This is a cruciform casket. It's actually shaped like a cross. This is an exhibit called Icons in Ash, where it's actual portraits of people made using their cremated remains. There is definitely something haunting and beautiful about these portraits. There's some animal portraits, you got some dogs, kitty, There's some horses there. Oh, even have an alligator, a chicken and a parrot. This is the money casket. It was invented by a casket creator to show off how you could place objects in to the actual casket design. It says that uh, currently has $643. Apparently it was one time broken into and uh, someone stole $1,000 off of this casket. This casket here is an absolute unbelievable tale to it. If you look inside, it's massive. This is a three-person casket. You see there's two big pillows, one small pillow. This couple that, that had this casket made, their, uh, their small child died and they made a murder-suicide pact where the husband was going to murder the wife and then kill himself and then all three would be buried together. Of course, the small child would have to be unburied. Um, so they ordered it from the funeral home, hadn't claimed it, and 20 years went by, they changed their mind, decided not to kill themselves. Uh, the husband died of natural causes, and the woman called the funeral uh, home, the casket designer, and uh, said she wanted her money back, said she changed her mind. <laughs> so thank you for joining me here at the Museum of Funeral History in Houston, Texas. This place is amazing, it is an absolute gem. Um, some of the just amazing artifacts they have in there, amazing displays, huge display on Pope funerals. Um, obviously that was a passion of, uh, of the owners, curators of the museum. Some uh, just amazing stuff. I cannot recommend this enough. If you're ever in the Houston area, please stop and check out the Museum of Funeral History. If you'd like to see other places I've been, please check the interactive map in the description of this video. Uh, you can tell me where I need to go, you can see where I have already been. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider buying a t-shirt, consider donating to Patreon. A $3 more donation will get you a postcard once a month. But for now, this one's in the bag.